This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by the General Secretary of the British Boxing Board of Control, Robert Smith. Robert, how are you? Very good, thank you. Glad to hear it. Boxing's coming back. Um, the announcement came out earlier this week, uh, mid-February. Venues and exact dates to be confirmed. And I guess, first of all, the question to ask is, what was the initial reasoning behind putting a halt on sanctioning boxing in the UK throughout January? Uh, the main reason was, uh, as has been explained to uh, in other the other media, is we obviously um, rely on the NHS. Uh, a lot of our doctors, our registered doctors, work for the NHS, as in being anaesthetists and surgeons and general doctor, uh, general GPs, etc., and sports doctors. And after lengthy discussions with our medical panel over the Christmas period, it was felt that um, the right thing to do with regard to the strain on the NHS, etc., and things changing all the time, we should uh, uh, suspend any boxing, which are ultimately two tournaments at the end of the month, and that we would restart again in February. Uh, we were hoping very much to start at the beginning of February. That hasn't quite worked out. And we fell again over just after the after we announced it last week. There's been lots of discussions with the doctors and they feel that we'd be okay to start again mid-February, which is what we're looking to do. Um, obviously, we have to, we can't leave it open-ended. Our promoters have got a great deal of work to do to get shows up and running, get them ready. You can't just click the fingers on a Thursday and run a show on, on a Saturday. So, as I say, we didn't want to keep it open-ended, but what we wanted to do was give them a period of time to get things ready. We've given them you know, six weeks, six weeks before the middle of February that we shut things down. And now we're five weeks before the middle of February, February to hopefully get things up and running. But of course, this is a very fluent situation. And should we have to say we can't run the shows in the middle of February, we will. Can you give us an insight into what the medical advisors have told you that gives them the confidence that mid-February is the right time? Yes, um, it's generally felt, I mean, right at the beginning of the process, we obviously shut down in March, I think it was 17th of March when I sent out a notice that all boxing was, was suspended. We started again in July. The vast majority of our doctors said that the peak period or the most difficult period in the country is going to be November, December. It was. Um, from the discussions we've had now, they feel that the peak is going to be in the next two weeks and hopefully things will slow down a little bit, which will give us an opportunity to start, as I say, in the middle of February. The one thing we've got to work on is where we're going to run these shows. Um, and that's what we're dealing with now. So the venues, dates, etc., are being worked upon now because obviously um, we may not be able to run shows in particular areas. So the medical panel is made up of the chief medical officers of each area, the British Boxing Board of Control. It is, is split into seven regions, which we call areas. They've given their input. We have other doctors on top on that medical panel who advise me as well. And uh, they feel the middle of February is a sensible time to aim for. Um, however, as I've said, if, uh, if needs be, we'll have to say, sorry, gentlemen, we can't run. But we're very, very hopeful that we can start the middle of February, as I'm sure everybody who likes boxing wants us to. Now, to clear up the elephant in the room, of course, I um, put out a vlog yesterday, which I know you would have preferred I had spoken to you first. And I've apologised privately for that, but I'm happy to apologise publicly as well. Um, I can blame time constraints and so on, but, you know, I, I should have spoken to you first. I have made the point in that vlog that this announcement that boxing is coming back in mid-February has come just days after an interview given by Eddie Hearn, who currently you, most people would regard as the foremost promoter in the UK, in which he said that if uh, the boxing board weren't to resume sanctioning shows anytime soon, he would very much consider taking his shows abroad to make sure his business could continue, which is understandable. Is that just the case then, your announcement coming so soon after his comments? Unfortunate coincidence. Uh, yes. I mean, we, we, I can honestly say we've had no pressure from our promoters to set a date to run shows. Um, the, the, the conversations I've had with all, of them, all the people who want to run in February have said, uh, or ultimately want to run uh, as soon as they can. 
is when do you think we can run? Uh, when can we promote shows? Which is understandable. Um, obviously, as I said earlier, you can't just say, right, we can, we're ready to go on a Thursday for you to promote on a Saturday. They need time to uh, put things in place and to organise venues, get the boxes sorted, uh, ma matches made, uh, for me to get the officials in place, make sure who's available, and also, more importantly, where we can run these shows. That's the most important thing. Um, so, yes, it was, I, and I, I fully understand what Eddie was saying. He is a promoter who promotes around the world. You know, at the beginning of January, he promoted in, in, um, in Texas. At the end of December, he promoted Callum Smith. He promotes in Monte Carlo. He promotes in Italy. He promotes in other countries, even in the Middle East. Um, so, you know, we have actually lost the show by not being able to run on the 6th of February. Lee Eaton is looking to run his show abroad. So we're well aware of the implications with regard to the sport in this country, but we've got to make sure that we're in a position to be able to run a show. We have a duty, and you mentioned it yesterday, with regard to his, you know, pr our primary objection is care for the boxers. I took that quite badly um, because we have a duty of care to the boxers, to the officials, uh, to trainers, to all the license holders, the promoters, and also to our doctors. Um, so, um, you know, that I think you were wrong in saying that because we have a duty of care. We take that very, very seriously. Um, and I'm sure you've had dealings with me in the past and within the board in the past. I'm sure you know the, the things we have to put in place to run any tournament. At the moment, the tournaments are fraught with problems um, because of the implications of the restrictions and the new protocols in place. So, you know, we're working even more to make sure those things run as smoothly as possible. And while I've got this opportunity to speak to you, it'd be remiss of me not to talk about some of the talk from last year about officials and judging um, issues. And I know it's something you've talked about previously in the media. I think you were approached just after um, one of the scorecards that came under question, like the next morning, which I'm not sure how uh, fair that was to grab you at that time, but you were, you were more than happy to speak to your credit. Um, can you just re go through for us the process of when a scorecard is deemed, I don't know what the word is, questionable, worthy of discussion, whatever you want to call it, what then happens? What's the board's protocol in that situation? Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, just going back to the interview, it's an interview that I have done many interviews since. Um, that wasn't the last interview done and I haven't hidden from anybody. It's an interview I shouldn't have done. I mean, we'd had a very bad night. Um, it was a taxing evening with doctors going to hospitals, a hospital, and also um, we obviously had an issue with the scorecards and uh, other issues on the show. So I held my hands up. I did an interview with Matt Christie on the Boxing News podcast, admitted I shouldn't have done it and apologised for it. Um, and, you know, I'm ugly, I'm old enough and ugly enough to take it on the chin, which I have done. Moving forward with regard to what we do, um, if there's a scorecard that we're concerned about, every contest, every tournament is reviewed. Um, and in fact, on that occasion, we brought in the judge on that contest and we interviewed him, took on board what he had to say. And we've done that with many, many of people who received reports from how, they, how they've perceived the contest compared to other people. But the one thing that I am very mindful of is that, and I'm sure you would, um, are aware of this is sometimes being live at a show you see a different fight than you would see on television now i'm not saying that's the example uh, uh, an excuse for that case but there is you do get um swayed sometimes by the commentators etc and you have to take it on board what the individual who deemed that result has to say and uh, that is very important on that occasion that the gentleman was guilty before he even had the opportunity to explain why, where he came from with regard to the score in the contest. That is disappointing. I think one of the issues people have is that when the notice came out to say basically that the uh, judge in question had judged fairly, there was no corruption involved, he, he judged what he interpreted was going on in the ring, and everyone was satisfied with that, but then there's that second issue of competence. So, yes, he's not corrupt at all, and he's uh, it's an honest scorecard, but is it a fair and accurate scorecard? And, and that didn't seem to be covered in the notice that came out, but I'm sure it was covered in the meeting.
Yes, it was covered in the meeting. Um, I, I mean, I, I think you know me well enough when I put press statements out, they're really, really relatively precise, straight to the so point of how, how we've dealt with something. Um, we had an explanation from him. We accepted it. Uh, and obviously, um, we monitor all the officials over the course of their career and over the course of their contests. And if we need to do something about about them in the future, we will do. Do you ever kind of assemble some judges that weren't working on that particular show and have them re-watch the fight to see what scores they come up with, to see how different, if at all, the judging question was from the consensus? We do have a referees committee, which is made up of the star class referees and representatives of each area council. And at that opportunity, that time, we can discuss um, uh, results, performances of any referee. So yes, we do have a mechanism with regard to that, yes. And what are the potential results of these meetings about the judges? Obviously, in this case, you accepted the explanation, it's all fine, but what, what could have happened? What were the other options on the table, if you like? Well, I mean, I think on, on any individual, I'm not dealing with that individual um, alone, but on any referee or any official, ultimately, the ultimate sanction is to withdraw their licence or, in case of a referee, downgrade. Um, we didn't deem that was the right thing to do on this occasion, but who knows with any other official in the future, that may be the case. But that is the, the ultimate. Um, but obviously, words of advice are given to people um, on how we feel they should be acting and what they should be looking for. Um, that is a regular occurrence. Danny. You know, that's what we do on a regular basis. When it comes to the judging in Britain specifically, do you think there's more of an issue now than there has been in the past? Or do you feel it's just under more scrutiny than it has been in the past? I think it's under more scrutiny. I think, you know, th these officials are working virtually every week. Um, uh, they're on television every week. Everybody has an opinion of which they're entitled to have an opinion. I think the star class referees are are monitored more than, well, scrutinised more than anybody else because of the type of contests they're, take, they're officiating in. So, yes, I think nowadays, compared to previous, um, I think they are under more scrutiny. Um, and fair enough, they're dealing with uh, major contests and, and, and people's progress in, in their career. So they, so they should be. Brilliant. Well, I really appreciate your time. Um, again, I hope we've cleared things up from yesterday. But in future, if anything like this comes up as a topic, I will, of course, contact you first. I think I think that's very important, Danny. You're, you're very lucky in the job you do, and you have a wide range of people you can speak to. Um, and I think that to, to go on board and give your opinion, which you're entitled to give, without checking the facts, are fundamentally incorrect. Um, so I would only hope that in the future um, that you, you know, anybody in, a, in your position, lucky enough to be in your position, can check the facts and the reasons why. I mean, it's very important why to, to get across to the general public and to the fans why we are hoping to come back in February. We want boxing back in February. We're, as, like anybody else, it's very important, but it has to be the reason why and not because of what is deemed to be pressure from any promoter or any particular promoter. That doesn't happen in this country. I hope it doesn't happen in other parts of the world, but it certainly doesn't happen in this country. And when we're ready to go, we will go. Who knows? Could be the next couple of weeks, the decision is taken out of our hands and the government stop all sport. But don't forget, we were the only sport that suspended sport, suspended their activity in the country in January. We're the only ones who did that. Um, and we're hoping to get back as soon as possible. And we did that for what we deem is to be the right reasons. And we're just hoping to get back as soon as possible, but only at the right time. But boxing, you know, boxing is very important to everybody. And we want it back. Um, and I'm sure when we get back, we'll be stronger and better than we were before. Brilliant. Well, thanks for clearing that up. And hopefully we'll speak to each other again soon. Take care, Danny. Bye-bye. And you, Rob. Bye.